We built some great AI power chat interfaces together. The models know about programming languages, historical events, scientific concepts, and millions of other topics to respond to user questions. Let's say you want to create an AI chat interface as an internal tool where anyone can ask questions about your company. For example, developers need to know about architecture decisions. Designers want to look up brand guidelines and user research findings. Product managers need roadmap information and customer feedback. Support teams need to quickly find solutions to customer issues and product documentation. The AI model has no information about any of this. It doesn't know your tech stack, your design system, your product strategy, or your customer history. And even for public information, there's always a cutoff date. The model doesn't know about yesterday's product launch or this morning's incident resolution. Now you might think, well, I'll just store all my data in a database and search when needed. Let me tell you, traditional search has a huge problem. Imagine you're on Netflix trying to find something to watch. You remember watching this great movie about AI taking over the world, but you can't remember the title. So you search for AI apocalypse or robots destroying humanity. If the movie's title and description don't have those exact words, you get nothing. Zero results. Maybe the movie description says machines gain consciousness and threaten mankind. Totally different words, but similar meaning. Traditional keyword search just doesn't work here. This is exactly what Netflix, Spotify, YouTube, basically every content platform has to deal with. How do you help users find content based on meaning, not just matching keywords? This is where embeddings come in. Embeddings are a way to turn text into numbers that capture what the text actually means. When you give text to an embedding model, it gives you back a list of numbers. We call this a vector. These numbers represent what your text means in mathematical terms. And here's the cool part. Similar meanings end up close together in this mathematical space, even if they use completely different words. So AI apocalypse, and machines gain consciousness would be really close in this embedding space, even though they don't share a single word. And this is how Netflix can show you the matrix when you search for reality simulation, even though the movie description might never use those words. Now let's talk about what these vectors actually are. A vector is just a list of decimal numbers. For OpenAI's Text Embedding 3 small model, you get 1,536 numbers. We call that 1,536 dimensions. Even the simplest text, like the matrix, will give you an array of 1,536 dimensions. Of course, we can't visualize thousands of dimensions. Our brains max out at 3D. But the idea is the same. Imagine a simple 2D graph where we plot movies. On the x-axis, maybe we measure action versus drama. And on the y-axis, realistic versus sci-fi. The matrix would be high on sci-fi and high on action. The godfather would be high on drama and high on realistic. With 1,500 plus dimensions, the model can capture super detailed aspects of meaning, which means similar content naturally groups together. All sci-fi movies about AI would be in one area. Romantic comedies would be grouped in another area. Historical documentaries would be somewhere else entirely. But it is smarter than just genre. The Matrix, Inception, and Blade Runner, for example, would be super close together because they're all philosophical sci-fi that explores reality. Meanwhile, Star Wars would be further away because it's sci-fi, but more adventure than philosophy. When Netflix wants to recommend movies, they find the movies closest to what you just watched in this embedding space. When you search, they convert your search into an embedding and find the closest content. No keyword matching is needed. But how do we measure closeness in this space? The most common way is called cosine similarity. Without getting too deep into the math, cosine similarity measures the angle between two vectors. It gives us a score from minus one to one, where one means identical meaning, zero means unrelated, and minus one means opposite meaning. So for example, 
The Matrix versus Inception could be 0.92, very similar. The Matrix versus Godfather could be 0.31, pretty different. And Matrix versus The Matrix Reloaded could be 0.98, almost identical. Of course, these numbers are hypothetical and will depend on the model you use. Embeddings and similarity search actually have many use cases. In customer support, when a customer says, my internet is slow, you can find similar resolved tickets even if they said connection lagging, pages loading forever, or bandwidth issues. In content moderation, you can detect harmful content even when people use creative spelling or code words to avoid keyword filters. In duplicate detection, you can find similar bug reports or support tickets even when people describe the same problem differently. In Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG for short, which is what we are building toward, you can store your documents as embeddings, find the most relevant ones for a user's question, and give them to the AI as context to generate an accurate answer. All right, now that we understand the theory, let's see how to actually implement this in code. In the next lesson, we will use OpenAI's embedding models to convert text into vectors.